Welcome back, Shalligators. Welcome back to Evil Week. Today, we're talking about a sin that I'm well acquainted with. I mean, I'm well acquainted with them all. They're like my seven dwarves, and I'm like Snow White. <laughs> and they alight on my hand like little sparrows, right? We're going to be talking about pride. Pride, pride, pride. Now, I'm a proud creature. I'm a vain, narcissistic little thing. And you know what? It's great, actually. It feels so good to be so self-absorbed. Why? Because it streamlines your decision-making. When we are constantly thinking about the feelings of others and societal norms and what Jesus would do if he was here, my God, we get caught in this decision-making sort of like loop. We're like a computer that just can't load, the giant spinning rainbow wheel, right? But when we have our own motives in mind, and only in mind, well, the path becomes clear. Suddenly, we're on the path of least resistance. But it takes a while to get on that path. And certainly, it takes some effort to clear resistance out of your way. So today, in our Pride Week video, no, not Pride Week. <laughs> Dude, we should do a, our own Pride Week, but like Pride the Sin. Oh, I, I have got ideas. Oh, that would be fantastic. Okay, anyway. Like, how to be just, like, awful, like a baby evil week. Oh, this would be fantastic. Okay. But today, for our Pride video for Evil Week, we're going to talk about how to stop apologizing. How to let go of that nice girl. I guess directive, we could say, that society foists upon us, like this horrible lead blanket at the dentist, right? How to slough that off and how to live for ourselves. And not only that, how to use this newfound pride and self-absorption to get ahead. But before we get into it, just wanna remind you guys, if you wanna connect with me one-on-one, -on -one, head to my website, shallonlester.com. I am always ready with some wicked delicious little advice and I can help you in just 24 hours. That's a new option we've recently added because sometimes you need help ASAP, the revenge cannot wait. Or if you want a video shout out for a friend, yourself, a pep talk, a birthday, anything, head over to Cameo. I'm Shallon XO. You can also find me at Shallon XO on Instagram and TikTok, where I'm posting just short little daily rants about celeb news and stuff and stuff like that. And I know you guys have noticed my new collection with Vault NYC. Now, some of you guys might already be in possession of my truly one of my greatest creations is our revenge necklace. We also had one that said warm-blooded, but we've got a new drop, Ruthless. I, you know, oh, I just love Ruthless. I love this necklace. It's a little bit bigger than the Revenge one. It comes in gold and silver. We also have one that says Alpha that comes in some diamond D crystals. Those are fantastic. If you want something that's like bad bitch, but not like evil bitch, you know I always go evil. You know, you know I always do. So go ahead and check that out. Available for pre-order. I believe they'll be shipping out on Halloween, if not a day or two before. So go head over to the link in the bio to Vault NYC. Okay, back to Evil Week. By the way, you guys love my wig. There's like a reason, like I'm tying this in, but you know she loves the wig, honey. And I, I miss when my hair was this color last year, because even though it like wrecked my hair. Doesn't matter, whatever. Let's talk pride. Why am I doing this topic for pride? Like, shouldn't it be, I don't know, like, wrath or envy, maybe? No, no. Because I hate that pride is a deadly sin. It makes me crazy. Some of them, yeah, okay, fine. Sloth. Yeah, I mean, back in the day when these were, like, dreamt up by, I don't know who the hell wrote the Bible, a bunch of dudes. If you were slothy and lazy, you weren't contributing to the tribe, Right? It's like, Dennis is working, Patricia is working, fucking Joanne's working, Gary over there, not doing shit, not building a fire, not producing, nothing. So it was part of a survival thing. Like, if you don't add value to the tribe, you're not going to have one, you're going to die in the winter. It's kind of how it should be. But pride. We're not supposed to be proud. I hear this from people who hate me all the time. In fact, one of you, one of you guys who's a fan... She's like, you know, Shannon, you're always talking about like, oh, look what I've done in my life. I love you, but it's getting old. Oh, I'm sorry. My accomplishments are getting old to you. That's interesting. They're not getting old to me. I mean, if you'd accomplish half of what I have, you'd want to brag too. Am I not allowed to be proud of myself? That's interesting. Who tells that to men? Who tells that to men? 
Nobody. Nobody. You be proud, you brag, keep that trophy from 8th grade soccer on your mantle forever, your bowling league, like, statue. Oh yeah, brag about that until the end of fucking time. Keep wearing your varsity letterman jacket 18 years after the fact. Go for it. But a woman, like, don't bring up the fact that you've, like, done things. It's, like, not a good look. Work hard, stay humble. You know what, Kendrick? No. I have never subscribe to this idea of humility is a virtue and choose kindness, treat people with kindness. Look, I'm not saying we should move through the world as a braggadocious, rude asshole, shoving people at target with our carts, even though I have done that. I'm not saying that's a great way to live. But what I am saying is the people who foist that idea on us have an agenda. Things like kindness, don't be prideful, be humble. You know what that keeps us all? Small. And what are people when they're small? They're actually not mighty at all. You know one phrase or a quote that I hate that I see on Instagram and Pinterest and like home good signs all the time? Though she be small, she be mighty. Thanks, Shakespeare. Listen, I'm not small. I don't care if I'm four foot one. I don't care if I am technically some sort of salamander. I am not small where it counts. I'm not small here, and I'm not small here, sweetheart. My butt is also pretty big, and I like it. But when we think of ourselves as small, as kind, I choose kindness, I treat people with kindness. <laughs> what is small in the animal kingdom? A predator or prey? Mm. It's a pretty easy answer. Why would you elect to be prey when you actually can elect to be predator? Shallon, I'm not trying to like hurt people. Like I don't want to be, it's like predator and prey. And you always talk about things like that. Like, uh, uh, uh. right now look, now look, now look. The word predator gets a bad rap, right? The word manipulation gets a very bad word. Oh, we shouldn't say, oh, no, no, no. Charm. Oh, my God, that's a great word. Go be charming. You want to charm the pants off someone. You don't say, I'm going to manipulate the pants off her. You're like, what? Jesus. Caitlin, fuck. Okay. We use terms like alpha, boss babe, CEO. We're not taught to use words like predator, dominator, conqueror. You know who gets to use words like that? Men. Men once again. And coincidentally, who gets to run the world? Huh. Our very vocabulary keeps us small. The connotations of words that men use freewheelingly to conquer, dominate, and prey upon resources, people, countries, whatever, opportunities, they get to do whatever they want. And we're here trying to scratch out an emotional living why? Because we have subscribed to this bullshit narrative that we need to be the nice girl, the nice girl. And so I'm just so nice. Okay. Why am I talking about this? Why am I bringing this up? Because as we've talked about in other Evil Week videos and just videos here on this channel, if change doesn't start in these two places, they're never going to come to fruition in real life, right? If you move through the world fundamentally thinking, I have to stay small, I have to be kind, everyone's going to hate me if I stand up for myself, I don't want to be a bitch. All of your machinations, all of your plans, all of your behaviors and standing up for yourself in real life are going to come across as such complete baloney. You will look like a clown. You will look like a little girl playing grown up. You know how I know that? I spent my 20s doing it. I had people tell me, you seem like a little girl playing grown up. And he said, it's endearing. And I took that, like, I've, I found the silver line and I actually talked about it in a video, but it, it, it should not be endearing. It sunk into me. I mean, this was 15 years ago. I remember it because I'm like, I mean, okay, I can use that to my advantage. I can like be manipulative and like give people the soft sell and they don't think of me as a predator because I'm just a little girl playing grown up. But I also don't love that. Because I'm trying really hard. I was trying to plan like a very large corporate event. And I'm like, I'm not, I'm actually not 
plain grown up. I'm not like wearing my mommy's shoes. <laughs> Woo, dude, dude, I drive a fire engine. I was like, I'm running this fucking event. I am a grown up. I am the boss here. And yet I'm not being taken seriously. Why? Because I was laboring under the delusion, the societal expectation that I had to be the nice girl. You have to be tough, but tender, strong, but sweet, like sassy, but in control. Like, do we? The answer is yes and no, right? I mean, if we truly are going to be our most charming, manipulative, we need to use every weapon at our disposal. We talked about this in another Evil Week video. When you look at an army and they're planning battle, would you ever like wag your finger at them for not using Every kind of special forces soldier, every kind of weaponry, every kind of tank, every kind of plane. No, you're like, well, they've got it. You better use it. Why else do you have it? Why else do we have the ability to charm, manipulate, be nice, be a bitch if we're not supposed to use it all? We're only supposed to use the nice things? Fuck that noise. Are you fucking kidding me? This makes me mad. This makes me mad. And you know what happens when I get mad? I get evil. I don't like being mad. And yet it's my default setting. It helps me reason through things. So let's look at this nice girl thing. Okay. So over the summer, we did our baby evil week, our little baby petite evil week. And I did a video. It was only on Flays. So I don't know if you guys saw it. I think it was on Flays. Anyway. How to be a sociopath, basically. How to crank up the self-absorption, the narcissism, the self-focus, how to dial down that empathy, right? Now, look, we don't want to be a sociopath. We don't want to move through the world and hurt people. True charm slash manipulation means everyone gets what they want. I've convinced her to give me what I want. She doesn't even know it might not be in her benefit in the long run. In the moment, maybe in the long term, she's happy and I'm happy. That is charm. That is charm. It's like we want to seduce. We don't want to rape, right? That's not like... Well, that's just like power. That's a steamroll. I don't, there's no accomplishment there. I get nothing out of that. I get satisfaction out of bending the world to my will, to making everything that benefits me seem like their idea. Hmm. Interesting. That's power. We could say that that's evil. But again, the people saying that are the people who want to keep us small. That's the thing about guilt. And this is what we talked about in the evil baby evil week sociopath video. So some of this is going to be, if you've seen that one, old news to you. We can always bear a refresher, right? Guilt never benefits you. Never. No, it challenge, it does because it, you know, it's like it makes me a better person and it keeps me from like doing bad things. Mm, how do we define bad? Bad according to who? You? Mm. Or does guilt benefit everyone else? Not true. We need a modicum of guilt. We need laws. We need structure. Back the blue, baby. We need this in society. Otherwise, it's anarchy. But what if we let everyone else do that? What if we obey the rules? We don't kill people. We don't hurt people. We don't do things. We don't steal. We don't, we don't need to do stuff like that, right? What if we pick and choose things that actually don't benefit us, do they? Mm, no. What if we pick and choose our own moral code? So now that we've established that guilt benefits the rest of society, let's get a little bit granular, right? Let's, let's break this down. Let's talk about religious guilt, because I know a lot of you guys are raised, you know, in a culture or a religion or whatever. I mean, I wasn't raised particularly religiously, but I believe in karma, the universe, cause and effect, right? I mean... For most of us, there is some sort of like existential, don't you do that, that keeps us, if not in line, it stays our hand from being truly wicked, right? Well, let's break that down. Okay, on one hand, yeah, this is a good thing. It's not good to steal from poor people or be cruel to someone who's already down. You don't want to murder. You don't want to rape. You don't want to pillage, stuff like that. But when we look at it overall, if we feel guilty, we're small again, right? Religion keeps us small. It keeps us compliant. It keeps us afraid. Hmm. So when you're 
trying to break free of this nice girl. Fuck shit, honestly. I want you to get granular. Who are you picturing in your mind as coming down hard on you if you're not a nice girl anymore? Not just like society. No, no, no. Who? Who is it? We talked before in videos about the car of people who judge, right? Like when we're afraid to branch out or try something new, we're like, I'm just afraid people are going to judge me. But weirdly, if we get like very granular, it's like specific people. And usually the specific people who they are, are like so ridiculous. And I go back to when I was in high school, there was this car of very popular, beautiful upperclassmen who would all carpool together. And my friend Diane was like, that is the car of people who judge. It was like Jim and Tara and Leia. And they were just like these like gods in high school, you know? And now when I think like, oh God, don't post that picture. Your butt's hanging out. I'm like, everyone's going to judge you. I literally think of them, Jim, Tara, Leia. And it's like, they don't even follow me. They don't even care if they did like, they don't care. My life doesn't matter to them. And yet I've localized. They're like this personal embodiment of the Greek chorus in the background of all of our lives. Our morality is localized on these people. And when I can look that in the face, I'm like, <laughs> I'm posting that ass shot. Okay. Let's talk about the car of people who guilt. The car of a nice girl. You have to be a nice girl. Who? Is it? Is it your priest? Is it your mom? Is it your best friend? Is it your boyfriend? Who is it? And really look that in the face because I bet you're going to be surprised at what faces pop up. And if you do come up with someone like your priest, it's like, I mean, you know, all due respect, all glory to God. Who the fuck cares what he thinks? Who cares what he thinks? Does he live your life? Does he live inside the consequences of your decisions 24 seven? No, baby girl, only you do. So you better like the decisions you make. They better actually benefit your life and not somebody else's idea of what your life should be. Not someone else's, like their weird benefits that they get. Well, you know, if Shallon buys, spends all this money to go on this trip, then I get to go on this trip. And so that's good for me. So fuck her and her finances. No. We have to look at who's actually imposing these emotional sanctions on us. Then we can start to dismantle it. I also want you to sit and think about all the times being nice has hurt you. Nice gets women killed. Plain and simple. Yeah, you can come in and use the phone. I actually, I guess another drink's fine. Yeah. You don't have a con. Okay. No, that's okay. Um, no, you don't have to go to CVS. It's fine. We can just, it's fine. Nice doesn't get men killed, right? Men use nice as a weapon. They use it as an eyedropper. I talked to you guys, you know, about your guy question. It's like, do you think this guy's just like trying to be nice? I'm like, guys aren't just nice. Like they aren't. Like not for very long. I mean, they'll hold your door open and, you know, help you with your groceries if you're an old lady, but that's kind of where it ends. They're polite, nice, kind. Mm. All the things that guys do just to be nice can easily fall under politeness. Now, of course, there's definitely good people in the world. I got a flat tire a few weeks ago on the way to Billings. Ugh, it's like my existential punishment for trying to go to Billings, Montana. And this farmer drove by and changed my tire for me. And I was like, you don't have to do this. And I had like 60 bucks in my wallet. I was like, please take this. He's like, no, this is the farmer way. I'm like, well, I am a city girl and we can't do shit for ourselves. So this is a city girl way. We pay people for their time. We're very appreciative. But like that was, that was a truly kind thing. And it blew me away because I do not expect humanity to just be like that. I expect people not to like run, you know, like ram the back of my car if I'm stranded, but I understand people have their own lives. You know, I say this because we cannot give to the world what we don't always get back. We cannot labor under this delusion that we have to be the nice girl, the sweet girl, the kind, the girl, polite girl. If we don't require that shit back from society and do we? Do we? No. Think of all the times when you've wanted to like go on a second or a third date with a guy and you're thinking about your schedule the next week. Okay, well, I've got volleyball this night and I've got that that night. Okay, Thursday night between like six and eight, that could work. Okay, I can shift some stuff around. I can make room for him. And you're like thinking about his schedule and thinking about schedules. And this motherfucker texts you 
6 p.m. He's like, what are you doing tonight? And you're like, okay, you couldn't you couldn't have asked me a few days ago. You couldn't have taken my schedule into account. Like, why am I doing all the heavy lifting and the shifting to accommodate you? And you can, can't do that back to me because they're men, because society doesn't require them to. And who makes up society? Our dumb asses. So when we start looking at the world from a very taking point of view, I gave, now what are you giving to me? Oh, nothing. Now the conversation is changing. Now the vibe is different. I will treat everyone with kindness until the second they give me a reason not to. And once that happens, it's done. It's done. You meet a different Shallon. And they should meet a different you. Don't go through the world guns a-blazing. But always be zipped into the cloak of niceness. But don't make that the core of who you are. Niceness, kindness is something you deploy when convenient, when strategic to your own aims, and most importantly, when earned. When earned. Kindness is a currency. Kindness is a thing I have, I know the value of, and I don't have an endless supply of it, do I? No. So I'm going to spend it wisely. And if I spend it on something that turns out to be a bad return on investment, a friend who betrays me, a family member who doesn't listen and doesn't respect me, a guy who doesn't value my sacrifices for my time for him. Currency's out, babe. We're bankrupt. Sorry, ATM's closed. So look at the times. Being nice has worked against you. Has worked against you. I was actually at a bar the last night with my friend and we were talking about this dude we call him van life because he lived in a fucking van right he's an homeless person but like we, it's so embarrassing but so many dudes are like that out here my friend's like just give it a chance i'm like he lives in a van down by the river like that's how he described it down by the river and we ended up like making out one night like at the same bar like we turned out to be at small town yay and because that was the last time i'd been to stacy's the bar and we had like made out and it was like so hot. And I was telling my friend, I was like, I was so DTF after that. Like I was so like, the kissing was so good. And like, I wanted to see him the next day. I was like, let's get this on. And he just blew it. He like blew it. I was like, do you want to go see a movie tonight? Cause it was kind of my turn to ask out. And he's like, could be a possibility. And I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? Who are you? Elon Musk. Do you have something better to do? You live in a van. Like What? And I ended up like blocking him because he was just very flaky and whatever. So I'm like, bro, you're a homeless person. I left New York to get away from people like you, not to date them. And I had said to her at dinner, I was like, you know, if I had to do it all over again, I would call him out and be like, I was so down to have sex with you and you blew it in the most like spectacular fashion. And I was sitting there saying this to her at dinner and I was so mad. I'm like, but no, I was like polite and like I didn't confront him about anything. I was just like nice and the Guess who walked through the door of that bar? He did. It was like God was like, okay, tough talker, have at it. And I was like, okay, okay yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do the thing that I just said I was going to do. And you know what? I did. I ran into him walking to the bathroom. He's like, hey. And I was like, let me get something off my shoes. <laughs> I like jumped right into it. I was like, I was so DTF. You blew it so hard. I'm sorry that I dealt with you in a, the delicate way that I did. I'm sorry I was nice to you. Not many people confront you and apologize, like rescind kindness. I did because I was, I mean, yeah, I was mad at him. He's a dipshit, but I was mad at myself. I was mad at myself because I defaulted to that female thing. Be polite. Don't burn bridges. It's a small town. Light it up, motherfucker. May the bridges we burn light the way. And I'm tired of not standing up for myself. I'm tired of pretending things don't bother me when they do. Where really is that getting me? Part of it, it's the romantic game. You got to play. You got to seem unbothered. I know. We know this and we go through this and this is, this is strategy. But then it gets in our brain that like, we're also teaching people how to treat us. What we permit, we promote. So when I'm like the cool girl, 
what is that doing for me? How is that affecting my outcomes? I honestly don't have a clear cut answer for you. I don't have a perfect percentage, 15% honest, 85% nice. This is our life's work is to strike that balance. When to be nice for our own aims, for our own strategy to lubricate the wheels of society. Is Christmas dinner really the time to call out Uncle Marty on his stance about Korean people? Maybe not, right? Maybe not. But this is our life's work. This is what we as women, unfortunately, have to do. When is it more useful? When are we playing the long game to be nice, be polite, choose kindness? If you're going to choose kindness, make sure you're choosing it for yourself and not for anybody else. Okay? So here's how we can strike that balance. Here's how we can get closer to an actual quantification. I want you to make a list of deal breakers. I want you to make, you know, when we talk about this, like, what do we call it? Like the war chart, like the war map where, and I've talked about this in terms of when I had a stalker. <laughs> Having stalkers the worst because people are like excited for you. They're like, girl, you made it. Woo, they're stalking you. It's not funny. It's not funny. It's not a compliment. It's terrorizing. And it's meant to be. That's the point. And I was so mad because I just, it's like, fight me in the street. Like, come at me. Like, fight me like a fucking man. It wasn't a man. It was a woman. But I just hated, I hated the subject views. I hated the cowardice. It just pissed me off. It was, it was ignoble. But during the course of that, I made a war map. I went and visited my friend in Texas. She's one of the most warlike people I know. Hi, Joan. I love you. And we made a map of if she does this, my response is that. If this happens, this is what I do. From the minor, comment on my Instagram. To the major, she shows up outside my apartment, which she did. What was I going to do? Doing something like that gave me a sense of control. It gave me a sense of peace. And it gave me a reduction of anxiety because now I knew what was going to do. Anxiety is, I don't know what to do if this happens. How am I going to react? How will I survive if X happens and I have to produce Y response? I already figured out that response. And I figured it out in a time of neutrality, relative neutrality. I wasn't trying to figure out a way out of the storm in the storm, right? It's always harder to get that umbrella open when it's already raining. So this gave me a, a profound sense of peace and control. And I want you to do the same thing with being nice. What are your deal breakers, right? If someone bumps into you at CVS, like nudges you, maybe you're like, I don't fucking care, man. I, I don't care. Someone calls you fat on Instagram. Maybe you do. When you can map these things out and start big, like start just the big things. A guy is pressuring me to have another drink. I don't want one. Or like a dude I don't want to go out with on Tinder keeps asking me out. Like, Make what scenarios do you encounter that give you this anxiety and this cognitive dissonance of, I don't want to do this, but I'm supposed to be nice. And I just don't want to be mean. I just want to reject him nicely. What are these scenarios? What pops up from you when you think about stress? What are they? And how can they relate back to being too nice? And how can you come up with a plan beforehand? If Uncle Marty starts talking about the Vietnam War and using Asian slurs... I'm not going to do anything. If he starts talking about my best friend who's Asian, <laughs> my eyes are going to go completely black like a fucking great white shark. This is what I'm going to do, right? But I'm going to have a plan. I'm going to say, Uncle Marty, I don't appreciate this. We've been over this. You look like a clown. I'm going to go eat in my room. And I'm going to deal with the consequences of my mom being mad, my sister being mad, Aunt Deb being mad. Okay, I'm going to make a war chart for that. How am I going to deal with that? Okay, now, if and when that scenario happens, hopefully it doesn't, I am in control. I have mapped out my emotions ahead of time so that my brain, instead of getting to the state of cognitive dissonance, which is, I don't like what's happening. I don't like what's happening. I don't like what's happening. Your brain is like, oh, I know what's about to happen and bitch, I'm ready. It's got a plan too. So there is no cognitive dissonance. There is, okay, this is unfolding. We don't love it. But we're not helpless. We're not a deer in the headlights anymore. Now, we're getting a sense, sort of a police sketch of who we are 
as a bit of a bitch. Not a mega bitch, just a bit of a bitch. I have things that are my own personal deal breakers. I have other things, don't bother me at all. Recently, one of my friends, we found out that this guy who's like in our group of friends here unfollowed us both on Instagram. And she was like, livid. I mean, because she's like, I just don't understand why. Like, we have not had a falling out. He's gay, so, it, you know, there's nothing like romantic going on. For me, I was like, fuck me, I, I really don't care. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't care. But I understood why she cared. But it's like, I'm used to people being assholes to me on the internet all day. She's not. She's like a normal person. So it was very difficult for her. And so something else happened, like, with our group of friends that I went ballistic over. And she's like, whatever. But I'm like, okay, this is, this is like good data that we all do have our own individual police sketch. And what pisses you off doesn't have to make sense to anyone else. Our boundaries make sense to us and nobody else. No is a complete sentence. The nice girl needs everyone to sign off on her decisions. And even then, there's always some people who might not approve. I mean, okay, my whole family said that it's okay. And all my friends said it's okay, but... But is it okay? I don't know. Are you guys mad at me? I don't know. Is it okay? I don't know. Is it okay? I've done a video. I forget what it was about. Maybe it was how to be a bitch. I don't even remember. But in it, I I said a phrase that I go back to a lot. I'm like self-mythologizing like I'm General MacArthur or something. Hate is freedom. Hate is freedom. I'll talk more about this in the video on what to do if you've been canceled. But it sounds crazy. Like, hate is not freedom. Love is freedom. To love and to be loved. And love wins. Okay, yeah, I mean, cool. Yeah, like, we all want to be loved and seen and accepted and validated. That's what we want. We want someone to say, all your decisions are okay. Who you are is just fine. It's not even fine. It's fantastic. Huh. What if we could give that to ourselves? What if instead of going out to work to make money, what if you discovered a magical inkjet printer that could print money at home? Real money, not counterfeit, actual money. Would you ever go to work again? Would you tell those fuckers at Noodles and Company to eat a bag of dicks? Probably. If you could print money at home, the freedom you would feel. What if you could print confidence? What if you could print validation at home? What if you could print approval? Who would you be if you didn't have to clock into society to get that approval, that validation, that confidence? What if you could say, goodbye, emotional noodles and company. I am my own noodles and company. I despise that restaurant. How would you act if you were free of the tyranny of everyone approving of you. Not just humans. God has to approve also. Oh, oh, not just 32 billion people on earth or whatever it is. A whole bunch of angels and archangels and saints that I've never even heard of. And Jesus and his mom and then probably Joseph. He's involved in this somehow. And all of the animals in the manger. Okay. Wow. I'm exhausted just thinking about it, right? What if you could bypass that? How do you bypass that? With hate. You bypass it with hate. Not hating other people. Certainly not hating yourself. But embracing the idea of being hated. Embracing the worst possible scenario that you're just a bitch. You're a stupid bitch. You're a mean, predatory, evil bitch whose mom should have had an abortion. People say this to me daily, verbatim, on the internet. And you know what that's done? It's given me wings. It's given me wings to fly away from the tyranny, the oppressive ball and chain of approval. It has launched me into a stratosphere of freedom I truly never thought possible. Was it fun? No. Growth is never fun. That's why they're called growing pains. But grow I did. And grow can you. But first, you have to zip yourself into this worst case scenario that everyone thinks you're a bitch. Everyone thinks you're a bitch. 
wow, you're just like dropping out of book club? I mean, okay, I guess you don't want to read that biography that's 925 pages. <sighs> Fine. You're like, no, I don't. I want to stay home and watch my weird British crime dramas. Okay, I want to watch Vera. What is the worst case scenario? Let's go there. Let's go right there because monsters live in the dark. So let's throw on the light. What happens if everyone hates you? First of all, I mean, I can tell you, and again, we'll cover more of this in the cancellation video, but like people, okay, people who don't know me hate me. Some people who did know me turned on me and hated me. That was painful when my fans were like, Shallon's helped me through a breakup. I used to love her, but you know what? I think she's a dumb bitch now. She should go die. I'm like, wow, okay. You sound kind of schizophrenic, but... I'm so surprised you have problems in your personal life. What a, what a surprise. But I mean, it's like, it's one thing for a stranger who doesn't know you to hate you. Betrayal is something else. There's the reason there's a word for it, right? It pokes at our emotional underbelly. But I want you to ask yourself how likely that is. When I look at myself and getting canceled, none of my actual friends turned on me. People who know me in real life. People who I value in real life. Not just, I value them as a fan or they could make me money or even we have an internet, like sexy relationship. No, like my people, my like ride or dies. No one turned on me e ever. And I'm, I'm using this as an example because it's such a large example. It's such a large scale version of what we're all afraid of on the micro. Everyone's going to think I'm a bitch. Try it on the internet. Try trending number four on Twitter. Not fun, right? But I realized like I was reborn. I'm like, well, fuck. Like if I can get through this, there is nothing else to be afraid of. So I don't want you guys to have to go through it, but I want you to, to stand inside that worst case scenario. Nobody thinks I should go to graphic design school. Everyone thinks this is a horrible idea. Let's go back to that 24 seven decision making thing, right? You make a decision. You might have to endure the disapprovals of other people in your life. Get granular again for how long? The 20 minutes you talk to your grandmother, is she going to talk a full 20 minutes about how she doesn't approve? Set a timer. She talked for six and a half minutes. Mm, that was a rough six and a half minutes. But it was only six and a half minutes. And I have to live inside my decisions. I have to live with knowing if I'm on an authentic or inauthentic path. 24-7. That's more than six and a half minutes. So the return on investment of me making my own decisions, being a disappointment, actually is six and a half minutes minus however the fuck many minutes are in a 24-hour day. That's actually a pretty good ROI, isn't it? Huh. Sometimes data is the antidote to anxiety. So I want you to inhabit these worst case scenarios because I guarantee they're not going to be as bad as you think. You drop out of book club. Guys, I hate it. I, hate, I fucking hate book club. I like hanging out. Love the wine. I'm not going to be reading the books. If you still want me to come, if I don't read the books, that's fine. If not, I totally get it. We'll meet you guys at Chili's after. But I'm not reading the books. You know what people are probably going to say? Okay, that sucks. You should read it. You'd like it, but it's your life. Fine. We wouldn't care so much what people thought about us <laughs> if we knew how seldom they did. Truly, the secret of life is that no one cares about you. This is the gift and the curse. Nobody cares. Nobody cares if you want to do book club. They might want you there, but their life goes on. But... What this is going to do is smoke out the toxic people. Because let's say you have someone in book club who's like, real, you know what? We got so much trouble to set this up. This was your idea. Ba, 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 ba. I can't believe it. You probably just want to go drink. Oh, I bet you're going to be on Tinder, like going out and fucking guys. Do you have someone when you put up your boundaries when you say, no, it doesn't work for me. I know I'm a bitch. Lead with it. Be like, I, you guys are going to hate me. I'm going to be a bitch, but I'm going to say that I have to go home. When you find someone who has a disproportionate reaction, a very strong reaction, you're like, oh, there you are. There you are. You're not a real friend to me. You're not actually on my side. I am a tool to you. What do we say? The people who hate our boundaries are the ones who benefit from us having none at all. And we can take out any word and substitute it for boundaries. The people who hate our goals 
are the ones who benefit from us having none at all. That controlling boyfriend who doesn't want you to go to law school, why not? So you can stay home and never meet anyone else and you will really notice that he vapes all day and wants to play Call of Duty professionally. Hmm. He doesn't want you to have any other data. People who hate your boundaries, your standards, your goals, your self-esteem, your pride, benefit from you having none at all. The people who tell me I shouldn't be proud of my accomplishments benefit from me being like, you're right. Because then their bullshit life doesn't seem so bad by comparison. They don't actually have to look in the face that a woman like me, that women like you exist. So suddenly, Cinnabon at the airport doesn't seem so bad. Suddenly, dropping out with one semester left. I mean, that's fine. I'm sure everyone does it. <laughs> that's great. You want to convince yourself of that? Fine. Don't you do it on my back, sweetheart. I'm not going to stay small so you can feel a little bit larger. I am big and I'm only getting bigger. And so are you. Do you know why? The freedom of hate. The gentle embrace of evil. Let go of the idea that everyone needs to like you. You're not for everyone. That's okay. Do you want to be? Well, I want to be liked. I want to be accepted. There's another half of that sentence you're not saying. I want to be accepted by people who I also accept. What? Now this idea of social inclusion, of being validated, of being seen, of being approved, takes on a wildly different meaning. I want to be liked by people I like. I want to be loved by someone who is worthy of my love. Oh my God. Now what do we have? Go back to what I said earlier. We have a dynamic with the world that's, I've given, now what are you giving to me? Nothing? <laughs> you're meeting a different version of me now. I'm going to be kind until I realize you're not going to be kind back. Now we got a problem. Now there's a different order. Now there's a different us. When you start requiring from the world what you're giving out, the ambition, the empathy, the ear, the time, right? When you start doing that, you go from a scarcity mentality to an abundance mentality. Because when I think of the nice girl, I think of meek. Like even the voice I do, I'm a little turtle without a shell, right? I think of someone who's desperate. I'll take what I can get. Please just love me. Please just approve of me. Please just tell me that I'm doing a good job. I think of like a four-year-old who needs to be like patted on the back and given a participation trophy. That's a scarcity mentality. That's a beggar's mentality. When we say, well, what are you going to give to me? I will give to you, but I need to know that we're on the same wavelength, that you respect my efforts and that you are going to match them with your own. That's an abundance mentality. Ironically, it's kind of not. It's sort of rooted in the idea of the scarcity of your own resources. Time is a currency. Kindness is a currency. Am I spending it wisely on you? Huh. But when people who are good with money are judicious about it, no, I just, I didn't want to buy that. That was a bad investment. You know, that's, that's silly. I don't, I don't need this. They're not operating from a scarcity mentality. They're operating from a legacy mentality. I like how I feel having money. I want to preserve this feeling. I don't want to feel scarcity. I don't want to be like, oh, that was such a bad purchase. What have I done? Now I have to eat ramen for the rest of the week. They don't want, no. They're very aware of how shitty it feels to feel that beggar's mentality and they're avoiding it. They're not like burying their head in the sand. They're like, no, I'm perfectly aware of how I will feel if I make a poor investment on this person, on this purchase, on this opportunity, whatever. And I'm not going to do that. I have inhabited the worst case scenario. I've gone there in my mind. Maybe I've gone there in real life from bad decisions and I don't want to be there again. So I'm going to do things to actively avoid it. Actively is the word. I'm not the ostrich burying my head in the sand. You know, they don't really do that, but I'm going to make judicious, conscious decisions. I'm going to get out when I realize this guy, this person, this job, this whatever is not going to match my efforts because I am abundant in my own pride. 
I have an abundance of pride. I don't have an abundance of time. I don't have an abundance of kindness. I don't need to. If I have an abundance of pride, I automatically budget those things the way that I should. Automatically. Just because I'm operating on a system of what's good for me. Serve myself first. Yeah, I'm going to take care of my kids. Of course, I'm going to be there for my family. I'm going to make sure my boyfriend feels listened to and heard. But me first. Make yourself the default setting. Some people, they're going to call that bitchy. They're going to call that prideful, self-absorbed, predatory, unkind, bitchy. Did I already say bitchy? We're going to say it again because you're a bitch. It's just such a bitch. Get good at this. Get good at accepting that. Don't voice these labels on yourself. I'm a mean person. I'm just a mean person. No, you're not. Redefine these things. Take these setback words, turn them into a setup. Turn that bitch. Yeah, yeah, I'm a bitch. If you define bitch as someone who looks out for herself, for the people she loves and suffers absolutely no fools, I'm a bitch. Oh, she's a predator. Yeah, I prey on opportunities that I want. I prey on injustices. I prey on hot fucking guys. I'm a predator. Uh Uh-oh. Now what? Now what? I've just taken the bullets out of your gun. You're shooting. They're not hurting me. Oh, gosh. Do you have anything else? You don't. That was it? Oh, brother. You said that last year, so it's kind of not making any sense right now, but I'm sorry that that's all you came armed with. I'm armed with a lot more. I want to know your thoughts on pride. Did you make the, did you flip the bitch switch? I guess we could call it. Where you went from the nice girl to the girl with some boundaries. Did people call you a bitch? Did your worst case scenarios come to pass? Because I mean, they might. People might be like, you've changed. People would say that to me. You've changed. I said, thank you. It's been purposeful. Wow. That was really mean what you said. Someone said that to me the other day. Like I texted a guy something mean. He's like, that was really mean. I said, it was meant to be. It was, it was meant to be mean. I'm glad we're on the same page. Thank you. Thank you for telling me that the arrow landed exactly where I aimed it. It's always nice to know you got a kill shot. Tell me how you have reconciled this. Do you have sort of an evil exemplar? I mean, someone you look at when we're talking about boundaries and not being nice and not laughing along to the jokes that are at your expense just to like keep the peace. Is it Kourtney Kardashian? You know, that's mine. Is it your sister? Is it me? Who is it? I hope it's me. But like, do you have someone who you can look at and be like, no, I'm going to operate a little bit more like Mona Katan. <laughs> I love you, Mona. You are the nice. I love how I picked you and you're like the sweetest, most amazing person. You're my like kindness exemplar. You honestly keep me from doing so much bad stuff. When I want to write something mean or post something mean, I'm like, Mona wouldn't do this. Mona and Hoda wouldn't do this. <sighs> so I don't, but... <laughs> We should do a kindness week. We're not going to do a kindness week, but if we did, Mo would be the central figure. Anyway, yeah, tell me your experience standing up for yourself. What sin do you think is actually the worst and which one should we maybe turn up a little bit? Because you know I'm going to choose pride. Join me again tomorrow for more Evil Week. We've got, we've got a bunch of deadly videos on the deadly sins to make you deadly accurate in real life. We'll see you later, shalligators. Bye.